Hello students, I am Divya Kashyap from IVS Education. As you all know that I am your chemistry expert so and we are doing electrochemistry. So now in this video we are going to start with electrochemical cell. That what is electrochemical cell? But before we start with electrochemical cell, I want to tell you that there are basically two types of redox reaction which we get to see. One type of redox reaction is direct redox reaction and the other type of redox reaction is indirect redox reaction. So we have basically two re redox reactions. One is uh, direct and the other is indirect. You know what is the difference between the two? Direct redox reaction is that in which we have a single beaker in which the oxidation and reduction is taking place. That means the element which is losing electron and the element which is gaining electron or you can say the substance which is getting oxidized and the substance which is getting reduced they are placed close to each other. So the electrons don't need to travel far. They are present in the same beaker. One is giving electrons and the other is accepting electrons. But if we talk about indirect redox reaction in this oxidation and reduction both occur in different beaker. Let's say if oxidation is occurring in this beaker, then the reduction is occurring in this beaker. So that means there is a substance which is losing electrons. The substance is getting oxidized. What do we mean by that? It means it is losing electrons. So the substance which is losing electrons is in this beaker and the substance which is gaining electron is present in the different beaker. So that means electrons from here, they have to travel a distance uh, to, a, uh, to a place where they are going to cause reduction. So that means they have to travel certain distance. Now when they travel certain distance they there will be a motion of electrons and we know that movement of electrons give rise to electric current. Ye pata hai hume, right? We know that movement of electrons say hamare paas kya jata hai? electric current. So I think you got it that redox reaction oxidation or reduction ek hi beaker mein hoga. Electron ko zyada travel nahi karna padega. Aur indirect redox reaction mein oxidation or reduction alag alag beaker mein hoga. To electrons jahan pe oxidation ho rahi hai wahan se dousre beaker mein jab jayenge they have to travel a certain distance. And their motion give rise to electric current. So if we talk about electrochemical cell. Right, so in this cell, you know that indirect redox reaction take place. So first of all, you should know that electrochemical cell is a cell which convert chemical energy into electrical energy. Jo kya convert karta hai? Chemical energy into electrical energy. How? Because in them, indirect redox reaction occur. In them, indirect redox reaction takes place. And the reaction which are occurring in the electrochemical cell, they are spontaneous. That means they occur on their own. We don't need to uh, initiate them or we don't need to supply any external source. They are spontaneous in nature. So that means delta G for the reactions which are occurring in the electrochemical cell is negative. So now let's start. What is electrochemical cell and how it is working? See, electrochemical cell, as I told you that in it, the indirect redox reaction take place. So, in electrochemical cell, we have two half cells. We have two chambers which are separated by a certain distance. So, I'll write here that they have two half cells. They have two half cells. One half cell is this and the other half cell is this. Right. So it consists of two half cells. So uh, in one half cell, the oxidation is going to take place and in the other half cell, the reduction is going to take place. So to understand more in a better way, let us take an example we are where we are going to take an electrochemical cell considering zinc copper couple. We are going to study about this galvanic cell that is zinc copper couple. So it also consists of two half cells and in the one half cell what we have, we have it is zinc copper couple. So there is zinc sulfate solution, there is zinc sulfate solution having zinc rod dipped in it, right. And in the other beaker there is copper solution that is copper sulfate with copper rod 
dipped in it. It has a copper rod dipped in it. I think you got it. Zinc rod dipped in zinc sulfate solution and copper rod dipped in copper sulfate solution. So on this side, you need to take zinc and zinc sulfate and on that side, you are going to take copper and copper sulfate. Do not, do not shuffle them. This has to be at this side and this has to be on this side. Now, these two electrodes, they are connected to each other by means of wire and they are attached to a galvanometer. You know that galvanometer is uh, very sensitive and it is an instrument which can actually record the uh, even a small amount of current if it is present there. So we, as I told you that in this the chemical energy give rise to electric energy. So that means there will be a movement of electrons which will give rise to electric current. Though the current value is not going to be very high but still the value is going to be of some magnitude. So that is the reason we have not used ammeter. We have used galvanometer due to its extra sensitivity because it can even detect the small amount of current if it is present in the circuit. So this is how the electrochemical cell apparatus is set. Now moreover we have one more thing. We have two solutions connected by a U-shaped tube. We have two solutions connected by the U-shaped tube and this tube is called as the shape is U-shaped and this is called as salt bridge. This is called as salt bridge, this U-shaped tube. And you know that the salt bridge, how it is formed? It is formed like you take a solution of uh, gelatin-like material like we have agar-agar and we mix an inert electrolyte into it. Inert electrolyte is an electrolyte which will not interfere in the reactions which are taking place in the cell. So that is the reason the term inert is used before the electrolyte. For example, we have we have KCl, we have KNO3, we have NH4, NO3. So like this, you can take any electrolyte. So what we do, we take this agar-agar and we take an electrolyte, we uh, heat them and then uh, let them cool. And on cooling, they form a porous kind of tube, which we actually draw into a U shape and then we put it into this beakers. And the ends of these tubes are closed with the help of cotton plug. We have cotton plug to ensure that the tube is, the ends are closed. So this is the apparatus how it is set. I think you got it. Now when we connect this in such a way, what observation do we get to see? There are certain observations that we get to see in it. First is this, with time we see that zinc rod loses weight. I'll write here what we see with time zinc rod loses weight with time the weight of zinc rod is dropped and what we see that with time the weight of copper rod is gained or you can say is increased. So we, what we see that with time this zinc rod is losing weight and this copper rod is gaining weight. Now you know what is the reason behind? The reason is behind is that because in this the indirect redox reaction is taking place. How? We know that zinc is more reactive than copper. Like if we compare their electron losing tendency, so zinc has more tendency to lose electron in comparison to copper. You know that. So what happens? Zinc loses the electrons to form Zn2 positive ions. So that means this rod is losing, I'll write it here, this rod is losing electrons to form Zn2 positive. So what happened? The Zn2 positive is going into the solution and these two electrons per zinc atom is released and they are moving towards they are moving towards the another beaker. So the direction of uh, movement of electron is this. So the direction of current is in opposite direction because they are moving so they give rise to current. Now when the electrons reach in this beaker, what happens? They reduce copper. That means copper accept these electrons and form and form copper. So that means copper ions which are present in solutions, they are gaining these electrons and forming a copper atom which starts depositing on this copper rod. And this is the reason that copper rod gains weight with time. 
So as you can see that oxidation is taking place in the speaker. That means zinc is losing electrons. So that means oxidation is taking place in this half cell. Therefore, this half cell is called as oxidation half cell. And as you see that reduction is taking place in this cell. So therefore, it is called as reduction half cell. So this is what is indirect redox reaction and how the electrochemical cell works. Now you must be thinking that what is the use of this salt bridge, right? Why we have used this U-shaped tube? The reason behind is that it is serving two important functions. One is that it is connecting the circuit or you can say it is completing the circuit. How? Because it is connecting these two solutions. See, rods are connected by means of wire and this uh, U-shaped tube is connecting the solutions because the ends of this tube is dipped into the solution. So you can say that it is completing the internal circuit by connecting the solutions. And moreover, the other reason, other uh, function is that it helps in maintaining the neutrality. It helps in maintaining the neutrality of solution. It helps in maintaining the neutrality. Now, how it helps in maintaining the neutrality? See, uh, this is very important. Just look at the board very carefully. You know that zinc is losing electrons. So more, uh, you can say that all the zinc atoms, they tend to lose electrons and they form zinc two positive ions. And this the zinc two positive ions are surrounded, surrounding this uh, rod. Right. So that means when the concentration of this Zn2 positive ion will increase in the solution, according to leach atli principle, we know that if agar koi cheez ki concentration bad jati hai, to uska production kam ho jata hai. Agar kisi cheez ki concentration kam ho jati hai, to uska production bad jata hai. You know that. Ab kyunki Zn2 positive ki concentration around the electrode ban gayi hai, to wo zinc ko oxidize hone se or oxidize hone se rokega. Right, because there is a lot of Zn2 positive charge which is in solution. So it will prevent more zinc to get oxidized. Right, now if the zinc will not get oxidized, how the electrons will produce? They won't be produced. And if they won't be produced, there won't be any electric energy, there won't be any reduction. Right, so that means this half cell will stop working. Similarly, if we look at the speaker, with time what happens, uh, you can say that lot of negative charge surrounds this electrode because we know that here the reduction is taking place. So a lot of uh, sulfate ions will be more in the solution that means the negative ions will be predominant in that case. So this negative charge will prevent the further electrons to enter into the beaker. Now if they will not allow them to enter the, how the reduction will occur. So that means this half cell will stop working and this half cell will stop working or we can say the complete cell will stop working. Right. So in order to avoid that situation, right, so what happened, the salt bridge function at that time. So what actually the salt bridge do, it uh, like when, when this gets surrounded by much positive charge and this gets surrounded by much negative charge. So to neutralize the extra charge, like if we have KCl electrolyte, so uh, the ions, oppositely charged ion from the salt bridge will diffuse into this as well as into this in order to neutralize the excess negative and excess positive charge. So that means here we have positive charge, so that means Cl negative ions will be released in it in order to neutralize the excess Zn2 positive so that the oxidation keeps on occurring. And similarly on this side, we know negative charge predominates, so it will uh, K positive ions will diffuse into this and it will uh, neutralize the excess negative charge so that it should not repel the electrons and the reduction should occur. So in that way we can say that it helps in maintaining the neutrality and it is not letting the cell to stop in any case. So salt bridge is performing a very very important function. So if we move on to electrolyte, I said inert electrolyte is required. The reason behind is that inert electrolyte, inert means it is it should not disturb any reaction which is going in this or in this beaker. It should not interfere. That is why it is inert to uh, this uh, solutions which are taking in the taken in the electrochemical cell. And the second thing, inert uh, one necessary condition to be used as electrolyte for salt bridge. 
the cations and the lines of electrolyte should be of same size so that their diffusion tendency or you can say the rate of diffusion is almost same that is the reason we use certain selected electrolytes uh, in the agar agar to form a salt bridge so i think you got it that how the electrochemical cell functions now if i need to write a complete reaction which is taking place in electrochemical cell that is i can write this way zinc plus cu2 positive forming zn2 positive plus cu so that means this is getting oxidized and this is getting reduced so this is a complete redox reaction and if i need to represent this electrochemical cell there is a particular method to represent it how we represent it we represent it this way first we write about the speaker the oxidation half cell we have zinc write a slash it forms zn2 positive then put two uh, lines that indicates the salt bridge then in the other beaker what we have we have cu2 positive ion which are uh, you can say forming copper so that means in this the oxidation is taking place in this the reduction is taking place and the flow of electron is from here to here this is the flow of electron and the direction of current is in opposite direction right and you may also write that we have one molar zn sulfate zinc sulfate solution and here also you can write we have one molar copper sulfate solution used in it so this is how you represent the electrochemical cell so like in this we took zinc and copper you may take uh, copper and silver so accordingly you will decide that which is going to be in oxidation half cell and which is going to be in reduction half cell let's say if i i give you a cell let's say i want you to make copper silver couple right you know that out of it copper has more tendency to lose electron so we will make copper as oxidation half cell and silver as reduction half cell so in this way we actually select that uh, which is going to be in, in this beaker and which is going to be in that beaker so i think you got it so this is all about the electrochemical cell